Okay, what's going on, guys? And welcome to a brand new episode of Energize. Today, we have a very special guest on the show. We have Cage Warriors welterweight future champion. You heard it in the future, Gary. Ian, how are you doing? What's up, boys? How are we? Ian, it's great to have yeah. you on the show, bud. Good to be here, boys. Always a pleasure. Good. How are you doing with the cabin fever, COVID-19? I saw you've been uh, even fighting yourself. <laughs> I've been fighting myself. I've been pissing my mom off. I've been wrecking her head. I've been fighting people on FaceTime. I don't know what's next, but let's just say is the longer this goes on, the weirder it's going to get. And yeah, I don't know. I, I can't deal with being locked up in a, in a house or locked up in a, in a room and being told to, to kind of stay there. I'm like, I just do what I want when I want. And that's it. So have to kind of stay in. I mean, my dad's sick. So if I get it and pass it on to him, chance I'll probably die. So yeah, same here, man. I know, yes. so it's mad, so I have to, while, I, while I'm so, like, careless and I just do what I want and I don't really think about it, I have to kind of be like, oh, right, I have I mean, to. How often would you train a day normally? Because, obviously, this cabin fever probably affects you more than your average Joe. Uh, three, times. three times. Normally, three times a day when I'm, when I'm in fight camp. And then if I'm not in fight camp, it'll be kind of two or three, depending on that. But they're, like, when I mean, like, people are like, oh, when you're on fight camp, how many sessions do you do? I'm like, three. And they're like, when you're off, how many do you do? I'm like, three. And they're like, so there's no difference. I'm like, no, the intensity is completely different. Like, if I'm going, doing a fight camp, I may go down and do a hard, hard sparring session in the morning with all the lads, meet up with James and Chris and Colin and all the boys, and we'll go in and do a, a session, get some food, go do a bit of training. So it might be a high-intensity cardio session. And then later on in the night it'll be a technique session. But if I'm not doing if I'm not doing a fight camp, it could completely change and be weights. It could be technique, 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 trying to get better and better and better and better and better. So it all varies. But now it's literally gone to staying in bed till about three o'clock, eating everything that I can set my eyes on to that is absolutely shite. So starbursts, Ben and Jerry's, all the lot. Uh the weight's starting to creep up, but we'll try to keep it down a little bit. I've got a rower inside. I've got some stuff that I can keep myself active in, so I'll try it. I'm, I'm going viral. Look, I, hey, come here. If I, if I had a camera on me all the time, I'd already be going viral. I don't post any of the stuff like that I normally do. If I, if I, my mates have already said it. If you just put a camera on me and just followed me around every day and just watched some of the shit I'd done or listened to some of the shit I'd say... I'd already be, be out there and famous and have hundreds of thousands of followers because I'm just wild. I just, I couldn't care less about any of the stuff I do. I just, you tell me to do something and I'm like, oh, it's not too dangerous. Yeah, I'll do it. Do you, so yeah, do, you do gaming as well, Ian? <laughs> yeah, I'm in there playing card with the boys. Yeah, so, do, you not, uh, do you not stream that, no? No, 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 no. Oh, no, God, no. Would it just be me cursing at my TV just constantly? Just go, bah! Scream and throwing the PlayStation controller at the TV and storming out. Um, no, but like literally, that's kind of what my life has become over the last kind of two weeks is just cod sitting there putting on the headset with the boys and just screaming at each other. So, in fairness, Cage, War Cage Warriors are actually going to make you like the face of their brand. Like, the you know, like their Instagram at the moment is just Ian Gary Central, and uh, that's all they want, you know what I mean? Ian Gary well, is, as they would say, the face that runs the place. No, I'm the look. I'm the best look, and I said this ages ago. I said, "Why not have me as the boy?" Um, look, cool. I'm cool with that. If they want to, if they want to use me and and put and post post my content and push me even further, and that's great. The more eyes on me, the better. Even if it's while we're doing nothing, yeah. it's still people clicking onto my social media and still people kind of seeing seeing what I'm about. And I'm just here. Like any of the stuff I posted there the other day, like I done a questionnaire and I was just taking this. It's just just being me, I'm not being fake or I'm not trying to be funny or I'm not trying to get people to follow me. I'm just enjoying it. Most of the time, it's just ripping my mom out and messing with her. So, yeah, but, uh, 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 Ian, you're, you're obviously 3 and 0 now in Cage Warriors, but like a lot of people probably don't know how you started out doing MMA. For the people tuning in yeah. now, can you let people know how you just started all out? Yeah, so basically, I, I started when I was younger. Obviously, was, I was always in fitness. 
I was doing stuff with Gan Hurling um, for Rohini. And then I, when I got to 10, I went to a boxing club, started doing boxing, had about 300 fights, and up to the age of like 14. Kind of fell out of love with it. I got tonsillitis on and off for like eight months, so I couldn't train. And then I had to get them uh, removed. When I got them removed, I started going back. I didn't like the gym, went back to Herman Guy and went, you know, I'm not mad about this. I don't I like I like punching people in the face or I like kind of being physical with someone. Went and joined judo, was gonna join MMA, decided I'd wait till my leaving cert was finished and get that done and over with. Got my black belt in judo and then as soon as I finished I went and left and went to MMA and haven't looked back since. Um I originally went to SPG Ireland. Um out in Bluebell. So I thought it'd be a great idea to just get on leave DIT when I was in college, jump on the Lewis straight into into uh, SVG Ireland. I was yeah. there for about three months, probably two months. And it was just, it was just a stress. Uh, I didn't really like, I was going out there for like an hour training because the way they had it designed was like, there was different levels of, basically the more money you paid, the more class you could do. Yeah, I saw that. And I was on like a mid, a mid level one, I can't remember what it was, but like, I went up and I couldn't, I couldn't do all the classes. So I was only going for an hour or two and then I'd have to leave. And I'm like, oh, I feel like I haven't done anything. So I was like, I'm driving all the way over or I'm getting the Lewis here and then going all the way back to go home. I was like, no, nah, I'm not doing this anymore. So I went to uh, SBG Swords at the time, met Chris and Tom, went in, loved it, clicked with the lads instantly. And then just never really looked back after that. I was just hooked. So yeah, and that which, is, was, which is Team KF right now. Team KF now, yeah. So King Fields. Um and I've never looked back. I, I mean it's probably the best the best thing I done was going to Team KF. That was because I, I owe all my success to them. I mean, I could have been a good prospect anywhere. I went because I'm athletic and I'm fit and that's I just always am like that. But with Chris behind me I'm a different level, so and that's why the lads we have and the lads were that are coming through the ranks are just going to be better than most people is because we've got Chris and Tom behind us. So there's no secret. It's 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 right there in front of them why we're the best, why we're one of the best. We just got to put the hard work now and earn in, the rest of it. In fairness, you know, I think a lot of people know who Chris Fields is through as uh, time the ultimate fighter uh, and just his time at SPG. I almost feel like people no less about Tom King because he's more of an OG in the game. Yeah, yeah. and he he's uh he's actually possibly the best jujitsu practitioner in Ireland. Well, best yeah. Irish one anyway. Yeah. Uh, he's absolutely incredible to have. What's it like to train under his tutelage? Uh, because I, I saw you did get an old rear naked choke there when you were in. So, uh, yes, yeah, I'm I'm pos I'm nearly positively still number one in Europe at the moment, ranking system wise. I think he's the number one ranked at his division and mm. uh, age group, whatever he's in. But when you think about all the black belts that are in Europe and he's the best at that, he's probably, he's going out beating all these other guys as coach, which is the way I look at it. So he's going out and he's coming up against, he's whatever age he is, he's going up against people hit the same age who all probably have gyms and teach around, the, teach around Europe and he's going out beating them. So he's a savage. I was asking Chris there the other, the other day, I was like, because I've had Tom once in a choke, and I was like, oh, I nearly had it, I nearly had it. And I was like, Chris, have you ever got him? He's like, no. He was like, what? Well, I was like, you've never got him? He's like, no, I've never got him. And I'm like, and there's no way I'm going to get him. I was like, what? Like, and he was, he's just unbelievable. He's so, like, his pressure is so good. The way he explains everything, it doesn't matter if you're someone who's your first day in jiu-jitsu, or if you're looking to get your black belt, he describes everything the same way as he would to both people because he's just so methodical about it and he takes it step by step by step. A white belt isn't as less isn't less important than a brown belt and a purple belt isn't more important than a blue belt. He sees everyone the same and he, he teaches everyone like they're all one and they're all equal and that's amazing. And then he beats us all like we're all equal. And he just, he's an animal. Like, the fact that we're training to be killers and we're going out there and 
putting on a show in the cage and then I go back and I'm getting I'm getting dragged around the mat by this guy who's like whatever he is, forty or something like that. I'm going, How am I gonna how am I gonna deal with this? Like I can't this is a knock on my ego. But that's why I'm I'm not a, a dickhead, is because I have Chris and Tom there and they, they, they put the beatings on me and they, they do what I need to. But um Tom would be a lot less recognized than Chris, but that's because Jiu Jitsu isn't as big as MMA and he's uh but he's an OG and I tell you what, he made my camp down in he made my my weekend down in Cork, man. He's hilarious. Him and Chris together. Cage Warriors Cork, yeah, when we were down there, he he just he made my weekend. He was just he's got such a dark humor and it's amazing. Him and Chris in the same room is a bad combo. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a brilliant corner you have there at TPF because like even if you look at your own career you're 3-0 you have one win by decision one by knockout one by submission you know what I mean just shows the yeah. well-roundedness of Ian Gary yeah well I said that too Chris so that was my plan for Cork was um, I was working the back constantly 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 and I was finding a lot of kind of places I was ending up in and basically just doing what a normal person who does jiu-jitsu would be doing at find a lot of positions where I was ending up in and then I try capitalizing and make them make the mine and make make sure I was winning them. And I found a nice little trick that I was doing. It's exactly how I won the fight in Cork. So I thought it was gonna go to the ground because I was gonna take him to the ground and I knew once I got his back it was game over. So I think I latched up his back after like forty five seconds or something, a minute. And I was like, as soon as I done that I knew it was done. Um but uh yeah it's just it's mad, like having the the, team, the corner I have, like Cole, Chris, and Tom King. So you're talking. I think Cole is probably the second most successful Irish fighter. Would you say? Yeah, Connor? yeah. Like arguably, then you've got. Well, uh, you know what? Weirdly enough, I'd almost say it's Ash Daly. You know that, like maybe not belt wise, but like uh, just in terms of like what she achieved in her career. This is what I'm saying. It very well could be, but you're, you should, it's definitely an argument. You could you could definitely kind of sway mm. either way. But let's just say he's the number two, right? And if not, we've got the other one anyway. We've got Ash in the club as well. So, yeah. but uh, like you've got probably the second most decorated kind of uh, male, we'll say, uh, MMA fighter in the country, in the club. We've got the best coach. The way Chris is coaching is phenomenal. Like lads, you have to just you just don't understand. When people come to our club and they see the coaching that's going on, they, they I know, like, people have said it to me before. I'm not going to name names. But they've sat there and gone, I've never heard, I've never seen that. I've never looked at that before. I've never even thought about it. I'm like, Wait, what, what, exactly, Ian, what exactly is he doing? It's just, he looks into positions. So, like, every day, this is, so at the moment, we, have, we all have homework. So, we all have to watch a fight a day. Um... And then we have to, in our group chat, we're sitting there commenting, like we're commenting on it and someone will ask something like, we watched, um, oh, who did we watch? It was Aldo and Edgar was yesterday. Today was Fedor and Minotaur and Aguero, I think it was. And then the day before that was uh, loads of, I can't remember, there's loads, I'm just talking shit now. There's loads of That sounds we like you got a C, C plus. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Get them to break them down. And then we're talking about them and we're like asking questions because obviously we can't train at the moment. And then he's breaking it down for us and he's saying why he didn't do this and why, why he could have done this and why he shouldn't have done this. But just loads of stuff. And then after our training sessions, we'll do, say, a 45-minute bit of positional, right, which is you start in a good position and you start in a bad position and you have to work your way out or you have to capitalise on it and finish, get a sober or get a ground and pound or something like that. Um, we'll all sit down afterwards and he'll ask us, have we any questions? Have we any positions where we, we felt uncomfortable or where we, we felt like we were losing out in? So say if someone was getting mount on me and I couldn't get them off mount, he'll go, okay, here's what you need to do. You need to hip bump, you need to knee elbow, get back to half guard, maybe work your way back, under hook, come up, grab the single, dive for the double. This is now my brain just going off because I'm, yeah. I like that a lot. That's my favorite part would be the learning aspect. So there's loads of different aspects and things he does, but he's just amazing. And I really can, I could sit here and talk about him for hours and say how good he is. And I know every, every guy says 
amazing things about their coach and say, oh, he's the best coach out there. Look, they probably are good. Don't get me wrong. But I guarantee you they're not as good as Chris. So, and then throw Tom in the mix there again. You're just, it's a recipe for, for disaster. Like, you're just, you're just asking to come up against savages. So, he, they really, like, I couldn't ask for a better club and better teammates. I mean, the vibe in the gym with all the boys is amazing. Like, it's, we go in, we all rip each other out, but, and then we all leave. That's it. It's just, you go up and it's, it's banter. We get our hard work done, and then it's on to the next training session. And no one blows smoke up anyone's arses, and no one's talking shit about each other. It's just a bit of crack. And then you go up there and you leave. Like, you, do you remember when you used to go into school and you used to be looking forward to going and seeing the lads and having a bit of crack with them? That's the same buzz I have going to the gym every day. I'm like, yes. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to tell him this, or I can't wait to, to rip it out of him today. And you know, you're going up and get some hard work done. So it's a bit of good, it's a good bit of crack. One thing I will say about you, Ian, is that you seem to make a lot of friends along your MMA journey. Uh, I see you're quite friendly with uh, Oban Elliott, um, Paul Hughes, um, and then obviously you train with James Webb quite a lot. Uh, yeah. Out of the four years, who do you think will be uh, uh, first to get that cage? Well, obviously Webby's already done it, but do you think yeah. you could beat him back to the belt? <laughs> oh, no, no, I don't think I'll beat uh, Well. I don't know what from what James has been saying, and he said it on a couple of interviews. He, when he was doing the fights for five minute rounds, it's a, it, an extra ten minutes of fighting doesn't sound like a lot, but added on to another fifteen minutes beforehand, and it sounds you're on right. This is twenty five minutes of fighting against another trained killer, another guy who's in there who knows the craft, mm. who's exceptionally good. And, like, Natias is an absolute monster. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's huge. And he, you know he's powerful. So, I don't know. I think the, the training made James not enjoy it. If you know what I mean. It, it kind of was putting a dampener on him. And, like, he wasn't the same person he was in camp. He was a little bit kind of, I know, I wouldn't say depressed, but he was a bit more down, if you know what I mean. Just wasn't enjoying it. It wasn't the same banter from him. And mm. I could tell it was getting to him. And I think he wants to just get a couple more three, uh, three five-minute rounds and just work his way back up and start to enjoy it more. Because I know he wants the belt. I know he wants the UFC. But I think he just wants a change. He doesn't want to go straight back into the five-minute round or the five-fives. So, to be honest, I don't know. Um, He's put his whole life into this as well. Exactly, yeah. And yeah. I don't know what he wants to do going forward with, I'm assuming him, I think, I know we've talked about it, him and his mate have talked about opening a gym and stuff like that. So maybe he might venture out into that. I don't know. They might do that. They're both amazing. So I won't say any more in case, like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. They might do that. But, um, yeah. So, but out of, the, out of the, the other three of us, I'll say, the unbeaten guys, me, Oban, and Paul, I'd, I'd be pissed off if I don't get there first. I'd be pissed <laughs> off. First. Um, Paul is 5-0, and oh, which is annoying because I would have been 4-0 and oh, and Oban probably would have been 4-0 oh two weeks after me. So we all, like, this is what I'm saying. I was annoyed at that fight mostly because of the momentum. It was kind of a, a block to the momentum because if you're fighting every three months, it's cool. Everyone is getting hyped and they're seeing that, like, oh, he's fighting again in three months. That, that's great. If you're fighting every six, two, twice every six months, it's it's nowhere near as uh, as kind of – enjoyable it's you're kind of waiting too long so that's why i like to be active i'm young i can be active now i'll sit when i'm when i'm 28 and 30 and i'm sitting at the top of the ufc brackets and i'm i'm going right who's next then i'll wait my time because people will have to earn the fight to fight me and i'll have to earn my shot to get that belt so i'll have no problem but right now geez i'd fight 52 times a year if you could let me <laughs> you wouldn't know Throw me, just throw me in there on the weekend. And just yeah, yeah. So, 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 so your answer, Paul's going to be first to the belt then? Sorry? So do you think Paul's going to be first to the belt then? No, I think I will. I think I'll beat him <laughs> too. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I think I'll beat him too. He's definitely got the, like, he's 5-0, and oh, so he's up there. But, um, no, no, I, I'll beat him too. Yeah. I Ian, definitely we, will. Ian, we just had Pizza Carroll on the show, and, he was, and I asked him, who do you think are the, the hottest prospects <coughs> in Ireland? And straight away, you said yourself and Paul Hughes. 
Uh, like yeah. obviously loads of people are, like, loads of people are giving you attention now. How how is that how is that sort of how is that making you feel, you know? A lot of people are keeping their well, eyes I, on I, it. I'd agree with you probably. Like out of all the prospects, we probably are the two hottest prospects. There's obviously a couple more around there, but like right now I, I understand where he's coming from with us too. Um the attention, like if it's cool, <laughs> it, it like it really doesn't mean a lot to me, if you know what I mean, in the sense that, like, I don't think about it too much. It's nice to know, like, people know who I am and stuff like that, and it's cool. And obviously, I'm still only, like, young in the sport, and I'm still rising, and a lot of people wouldn't know me, but it's kind of nice for people to know me. Like, yeah. I suppose I'm in it. Bang! Get out! I can't believe it. I have some food. The man's bringing me food. Here, look. <laughs> I can't remember. Um... Watch you make so, uh, <laughs> Watch you make yeah, it. Watch you make it. We'll just go out and bathroom, will we? You can watch. <laughs> um, but, uh, like, I suppose it's the one time it was kind of very cool. I was over in Amsterdam after my fight with my best mate. And I was going into uh, the Wax Museum. And there was an Irish family standing in front of me. And one of the kids was turning around and went, Dad, Dad, that's Ian Gary. That's Ian Gary. And they came over and got a pick. And I was like, what? Yeah. I was like, no, I was like, nah, that's, I was like, see, that's cool. Because I would have never, ever thought people would have known who I am. They might look at me twice and go, I know that face. That's it. But your man knew who I was straight away. And I was like, that was, that was just really cool. And that was kind of the moment I was like, oh, shit. I was like, this is cool. But uh, I don't really think about it too much. Obviously, like, fame and fortune is cool. But mm. that's not what I want. If I do well, that's what's going to come with the, the kind of publicity and being out there on social media and people watching my fights and that's going to come with it. But, but I just want to make a legacy. And the more people that know me, the better. And the more people that watch me, the better because it just means more eyes on the fight. And the more eyes on the fight, the better I want to do. It just drives me even more. Yeah. In fairness, Ian, like, I think we've always known that about you, that like, your goal is to be the best. And, you know, you'll take a walk, a walk comes with that. Obviously, you know the best fighters. Uh, well, you always say they're in the UFC, and you 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 have no uh, qualms about saying that you you're a, no. almost not the other organizations. But you say the UFC are the the best, the best. Uh, yeah. Tell us this. Uh, obviously, you know if you fought uh, in UFC or sorry, Cage Warriors one thirteen, you might have got another quick fight around, and maybe might have made UFC Dublin. Now maybe. That, uh, maybe now that UFC Dublin like won't be on the cards just due to the coronavirus and that sort of thing. How many fights do you think you are away from there? And is it a necessity to capture the Cage Warriors belt before you actually make that jump? Right. So we'll start off with UFC Dublin. That was a, a massive maybe in the first place. So if I had a fought on Cage Warriors in London, which was moved to Manchester, I would have been 4 0. And then obviously Belfast was lined up for May 16th. Yeah. I, would, I could have been 5-0, and oh, and the amount of hype I would have had at 5-0 and oh anyway would, would, have, would have probably got me there anyway with people shouting it out and saying it and saying it and saying it. And I definitely would have, I would have said something on the mic after I won in Belfast, and that would have maybe pushed it a little bit more. But I'm, I'm, I was never looking for it. It was obviously in the back of my mind, and it was a, look, if I do this, I could end up here. Mm. But um, I, I'm not thinking about it anymore. It's gone. I look. At the way it's going, that might not even happen. Yeah. Like I mean, they're saying that we could be in lockdown for twelve weeks. So you never, you never, you never know. Oh, stop! Which would? Do you know what I mean? But uh, that's that's kind of out the window for me now. And my sights are kind of set on just getting as many fights as I can as I can in after this is all kind of settled down. And yeah. Ian, that, think, could, like, Ian that, that could be a blessing in disguise. You know that rather than like pushing you too quick, now it's like right. Mm. I can just keep building the way you have been. Yeah, exactly. No, no, you're you're 100 right, and it kind of like Chris, that's what Chris sat me down when he was saying like Chris sat me down in the gym a couple of weeks ago, before, and when he told me like he was, I wasn't fighting. He was like, "Look, I've had a thought about this." He's like, "This isn't a, a a conversation. This is me telling you, or this isn't an argument. I'm telling you what's happening." He was like, "Don't worry about the UFC Dublin." He was like, "That will." He was like, "You're not going to be." in the UFC. He was like, I think you could be a UFC champion. He was like, you know, I don't like blowing smoke up people's arse or you don't like saying stuff. He's like, but he was like, but you, he was like, 
we don't want to risk anything at this stage in your career. He was like, yeah. you're young, you're athletic, you're talented. He was like, you're hard working. He was like, he was like, don't set your sights on something. He was like, think of a bigger picture. He was like, you're going to get there anyway. He yeah. was like, you're probably going to be in the UFC within the next, like, 16 to 18, like, 24 months. Like, you're going to be there whenever. Like, yeah, it'll come like, when it comes. Exactly. He was like, you're going to get there. He was like, let's, let's forget about UFC Dublin and let's just think about getting this title. So, obviously, I want the Cage Warriors title. There obviously could be a case now if I am hyped up enough and I beat the right guys that I could end up going beforehand. The UFC might want to snatch me up or maybe they need a, a replacement somewhere and I, I throw my hat in and I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. Uh, that can obviously be a case, but I, I want to be a part of that Cage Warriors royalty. I want to... I want that to happen. You want the gold, and then I want to go up and get the middleweight belt as well. Um, well, no, uh, if I'm right, I don't think anyone has done the champ champ since Connor. And Chris has won the middleweight title. James has won the middleweight title. I'd like to win the middleweight title as well, if I can, if the option is there. If the UFC want to take me straight away, I'm not going to argue. But if the, if there's a chance I can do it, why not? I'm fair. It's your middleweight now, so like. You might have like go for it. Go up, man. Go up. <laughs> go up. Hey, Gary, I'd 93 to kilos. To I'd have to cut to make light heavyweight right now, right? Would you, do you think oh. you're going to end up being a bit like Darren Till, the way he like stayed welterweight and then just moved up to the middleweight? Do you think by the time you hit 28, welterweight yeah. might be a bit too small? Yeah, yeah. I thought, yeah, thought, yeah, yeah, I think they're so. They're quite big. Like, They're totally at 6'2", 6'3". Six, 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 three, three. Three, yeah. Yeah, yeah, six, yeah. Three. And I'm like, I'm, so I never done strength and conditioning until... May, June last year because I didn't do it before my my pro debut and I couldn't do anything because I broke my hand and I was out for weeks and weeks after that. So that was when I started doing it. So I'm just getting bigger and stronger and fitter. Now, obviously, the fitter has to do anything, but when I'm lifting weights, I'm, my body's just growing. So, like, my shoulders and my chest have all gotten broader and bigger and stuff like that. So I was a late bloomer anyway when it comes to, like, growing and stuff like that. So I think there might be another year or two in me just kind of slowly growing a little bit. And then, yeah, probably we will end up at middleweight, I would imagine. Yeah. Probably. We might get – we might be able to hold off on welterweight till I'm about 25. But I've seen Darren Till struggle to cut weight, yeah. and I don't want to do that. If I'm struggling to cut to, to welterweight, the, the one time I sit there, I'll turn, like, I'll have, I'd have no problem finding a middleweight. No problem. I, I wouldn't care. I'd do it tomorrow if I, like, I wouldn't care. I was like, but it's about... I can see it now. Gary versus Adesanya. Yeah. <laughs> he's old. He's old, man. He's going to be gone by the time I'm there. Would you stop? He's like be, yeah. 30, 31. I think, yeah, I think he's 31, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah but give him four years' time. Yeah, yeah four years' time, he'd be... Oh, man, I'd leave him in a box. <laughs> no way um, but uh, no he's an animal though he, I, I, there's a lot of good I'd love to see him until yeah, yeah just don't fight just promise you something if you're Yoel Romero is still hanging around in the safety don't, don't fight him will you no nah, nah, man I would fight him <laughs> I, oh, he, he scares me he does don't get me wrong he, he's scary but he's so cool I, I would fight him oh you break your foot kick him in the stomach Oh, you definitely would. I, I would <laughs> just have to, I'd try to take him down. Ian, there's just a, Here it goes. There's a well, I don't know if either of you saw this, but I just want to break a bit of news. See, Khabib's stuck in Russia and actually can't make UFC 249. And the UFC yeah, is trying to make Ferguson versus uh, Gaethje. What do you think of that? Lads, give us your initial thoughts on that. That's a great that? scrap. Just think like, Gaethje's so underrated. Do you not know that, Baz, no? No, no, no. I saw it, but I, I, like, I wanted Ferguson and Khabib. I know they can't make it. Why not just take the whole card off? You know? Yeah, I think they should as well. Uh, that's why I just, I seen Pete's tweet about that. He said, sure, the whole reason this whole card is going ahead at this time is because we want Khabib and Tony. If it's yeah. not going ahead, then scrap the whole thing. I'd agree yeah. with it. But at the same time, there's a lot of other people on that card that have, again, as I was saying with the cage was saying, have been working, thinking they're yeah, still fighting. Yeah, it's paid. Yeah. And, well, yeah, exactly. And it's not, even if you took out money, Right, I'd still want to fight if I was told I'm fighting in, in two weeks. I'd still want to fight regardless of the money, but obviously that's what 
feeds their family and like helps raise their kids and stuff like that and pays mm. the bills and that I completely understand that but just the fighter in them will go I want to fight still so you're going to have a lot of other people on that card still wanting to go ahead and yeah. if Khabib can't get out of Russia I'm telling you now that's a great scrap I I'm, sure, I'm sure you can give Putin a shout like you know Ash, come on. I'm sure he could have Tony flown over in a private jet right and put in the middle of like middle of Moscow or something like that and just put 70 80,000 people in a stadium and just have <laughs> flair everywhere get just the ultras in get the Dagestan ultras in oh a hundred <laughs> man I'm telling you they definitely could Newton could do it with the snap of a finger um, is, is a decent question not what is Khabib still doing in Russia should he not be in the States no he left. He oh, left a while ago. Recently, a while ago. Yeah, he left. I think he left about a week ago. I remember seeing a picture of him and Islam yeah. uh, Makashev or whatever, however you say it, with all the face masks going through the uh, airport. I don't know. Maybe he wanted to be back with his dad or something like that. His family and stuff like that. Oh yeah, the cool. Exactly. I I don't know <laughs> what, what he wants to do, but I thought it would have been smart to stay in America and get prepped and get ready, but. I don't know. Not to suppose that's like each their own. But yeah. I was saying, what if why not get if they can't get just Gaethje, right? Oliveira, Charles Oliveira, and Tony Ferguson. That yeah, would, they'd be oh, scary. That would be deadly. I'd just love to see them two roll. Yeah, same here. Ho, ho, Jorge Masvidal threw his name in the hat and all for him. Yeah, no, I don't think that'll happen. I'm sure, he's like, that could be for the BMF belt. Ferguson yeah. versus Masvidal. Oh, well, right. Technically, That's Ferguson's cool. still the champ. He never lost at all. Technically, he is. yeah, you're right. But yeah, but the BMF, Tony Ferguson's yeah. the BMF. <laughs> That's a good scrap as well. I think Masvidal, <laughs> Masvidal is is a bit big and he hits hard, and Ferguson gets hit a lot early on, especially. He gets hit a lot and he starts to warm up and feel into it, and then pressure, pressure, pressure. So if you could last kind of the first. Round or two, I suppose it'd be a five round fight. I'd say you'd win it. Yeah, <coughs> that's set to go down in under three weeks' time. As don't well. worry, guys, I don't have coronavirus. All right, uh, just, before <laughs> wrap, just before we wrap it up, the rumor, the word in the street is Darren Till versus Robert Whitaker for UC Dublin. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, it's a great scrap, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> isn't it? A good fight. Um. Oh, I don't know. Come here, if we're going on last performances. Right? Just nothing else because you're only as good as your last performance. I think Darren Till could win it because we watched Kelvin against Adesanya and then we seen Adesanya go or we seen Adesanya against Whitaker and that was a that, look, both of them were good fights. I think Whitaker was unlucky to get caught with that shot late. He was kind of reaching and just got clipped on the way in. I'm doing that against someone who's out of San who's long and looks to catch people rushing in as a bad move. Yeah. But then we went and seen Till go out and do amazing against Gastelum. So I think I think he has everything to there to do it. And I don't yeah. think either now to wrestle or grapple or go to the ground. So if we're gonna watch them, I reckon it'll be one of them's getting slept. I think I think Darren Till has more knockout power. Than um, Adesanya, so if it was to lead into the into the uh, the championship fight, that'd be cool to see them too. But I would like to see Whitaker back against Adesanya for the belt. But I think uh, Darren Till will end up winning it against uh, Whitaker. I think he's yeah. uh, he's very he's very good at that kind of tie style stand there. So mm. whether it's small or tall or long and rangy, it doesn't really matter. Um, and I think he's battled a lot of demons in his head. I was listening to some stuff on his interviews. And stuff like that. He's uh, he seems like he's just in a good spot and he's ready to scrap. And yeah, I I, I love Darren Till. I mean, he's absolutely hilarious. So yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd love to see him do well. I mean, well, Robert we were, Robert we Whitaker is a legend as well, man. Hmm? Robert Whitaker is a legend as well. Oh come here! I'm not arguing that. I just think I was sitting me and me and the lads were in the car going up to an event a couple of weeks ago, and we were sitting in the car and we were trying to say who is the best personality in MMA, like, like who would be up there? And, like, all three of us were, like, kind of, like, Adesanya, Whitaker, Stephen Wonderboy, because he's just the nicest person. You can never not add him in. Like, Masvidal, Darren Till, these are all the people. And I was like... Don't forget Max Holloway. 
Yes, he I agreed, and and he's up there, and he's easily the nicest. But if we're talking about the nicest person in MMA, it's definitely Wonderboy. Yeah. And if we're talking, about, yeah. yeah, if we're talking about the kind of the best personality, it would probably be uh, Darren Till. He's just he's hilarious. Some of the stuff he posts are brilliant, and like like that shit. Oh, look, I ain't fighting you well. Like that's amazing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Let's be honest. No one's gonna be as good as Connor or Chael. Do you know what I mean? So no. So it's it's plain and simple. Grand, but Ian, uh, I think we're just gonna wrap things up there. Uh, th- thanks for that. You're an absolute legend. Thanks for coming on. Um, no, Barry, anything like that? Yeah, Ian, man. Ever since we had you on the first show, just following your career has been absolutely brilliant. Uh, massive shout out to the lads at Team KF as well. There's a lot of them follow us, and we follow them. The sports model with Julie Tacan, Shetty's, Dylan too. The list goes on. But uh, Ian, keep it going. Like we're looking forward to seeing what happens next, and uh, stay energized. Stay energized, stay energized boy. Cheers, lads. Appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Stay energized.